The movie begins in a world where the melting of polar ice has resulted in all continents becoming submerged in water, forcing humans to adapt to their new environment. They now live in rugged, floating communities known as atolls, feeding on seafood and living off of trades. Plants, dirt, and soil cost more than gold, and people use their urine for cultivation due to lack of fresh water. In other words, this movie was the inspiration for Burning Man. Although the world is turned into an endless, giant ocean, many believe there still exists dry land somewhere. Several groups of people are looking for the said magical place in hopes of living a better life, but no one has been successful yet. We are introduced to a man named Mariner, who lives in a ramshackle boat that appears to be made of scrap. Boy, Costner sure loved showing off his ass in the 90s. He is seen urinating in a small vessel, and then pouring this urine into a machine that converts it into drinkable water. In the boat, he has planted a lime tree, a rare commodity in the world with no land. Mariner does fishing and collects reusable trash from the ocean for his survival. One afternoon, after a dive, he notices another boat approaching him. The man on the other boat tells Mariner about an atoll, where where he obtained various supplies. He wants to trade them, but when Mariner learns that the man wants nothing in return, he begins to doubt him. He soon realizes that the man has stolen all of his limes. Simultaneously, a group of smokers arrives in their jet skis and begins attacking them. Despite the fact that Mariner's boat is made up of scrap, it is fast and he is able to escape, whereas the other man is apprehended by the smokers. Following this, Mariner arrives at the atoll, a floating city surrounded by high metal walls. At the gate, he says he's there to trade his belongings. Upon heading inside, he reveals that he has some genuine dirt to trade, which is extremely rare. Seeing this, the people of the atoll give him 124 chits in exchange for a jar of dirt. He then uses the same chits to purchase a tomato plant, which is full of dirt, and some other scraps from a woman named Helen. After the trade, he is returning to his boat when a family approaches him and asks him to impregnate their daughter, but he refuses to do so. Not accepting a woman makes them think he's nuts so they order the locals to stop him. After he is apprehended, the locals discover Mariner is a mutant, with gills behind his ears and webbed feet. Mariner tries to fight back, but he is captured under a fishing net. Later that night, Helen meets with an elderly man named Gregor and inquires as to when they can depart for dry land. Gregor informs that the direction for the dry land is tattooed on the back of a little girl named Enola, but he does not understand it. Gregor then considers asking Mariner about it, who is imprisoned inside a cage. Following this, he approaches Mariner and inquires about the mutation, but Mariner appears to be dismissive of him. Only when Gregor shows the picture of the tattoo does Mariner seem interested. In exchange for the information, Mariner wants him to open the cage, but Gregor is not allowed to do so. The next day, the local people decide to drown Mariner in the swamp pit by lowering his cage, but to his good fortune, simultaneously, an army of smokers led by Deacon arrives to attack the atoll. They are also looking for the mythical dry Island, and want to get to the little girl who holds the secret to its path. Soon after, the smokers encircle the atoll and begin shooting with large machine guns, killing several atoll residents. Eventually, the smokers with the jet skis enter the building via self-built ramps. Inside, Gregor fills a balloon and inadvertently flies away, abandoning Helen and Enola. Meanwhile, Mariner tries to break free, but his cage collapses, causing it to shrink gradually. Helen notices this and rushes to his aid. She agrees to assist him, but only if he takes her and Enola with him, to which he agrees. Following this, he tells the girls to open the gate until he starts his boat. Unfortunately, the gate becomes stuck, so Mariner uses the ship's rigging to fly up, open the gate, and jump back to the boat. Enola and Helen also board the boat and make their way out of Atoll. On the other hand, the smoker with machine guns continues to fire in an undetermined direction, causing their leader Deacon's boat to explode. However, Deacon dives into the sea at that precise moment, saving saving his life. After the battle, the smokers continue looking for Enola, having found that she has the tattoo of the way to dry land. The smokers bind one of the locals and inquire about Enola. Fearful of death, the man reveals everything he knows, but he is killed anyway. As they sail away, Helen asks Mariner if he knows how to get to dry land, to which he responds in the affirmative. However, he advises her to throw Enola away before going there, because they have limited food and water. Helen tries to persuade him not to do so. She even offers herself in turn for the 
the little girl's life, but Mariner dismisses her. Men with gills and webbed feet are asexual. After a while, Mariner notices Enola drawing on his boat, which irritates him, and he throws her into the water. Helen panics, knowing that Enola is unable to swim, so she dives in to save her. Mariner appears to abandon the two in the water, but he later returns to pick them up. As soon as they get on the boat, the smokers arrive on a plane and begin shooting at them. While Mariner goes down to retrieve his weapon, Helen rushes towards the large spear gun and fires at it without Mariner's permission. As a result, the plane is now tethered to the boat by the metal rope and begins circling it, tangling it in a web. When Mariner notices this, he rushes up to cut the rope and untangle the boat, while the smokers do the same. A few moments later, the smokers are able to shoot the rope and fly away, whereas Mariner swings off and lands in the water. He is furious at Helen for destroying the boat, so he cuts both her and Enola's hair as punishment. Weird. On the other hand, Deacon guesses their location and deploys his men to find Enola. While sailing, they come across a drifter who admits to having some important papers and offers to trade them in exchange for Helen. Helen refuses, but Mariner agrees. The drifter takes Helen to his boat, while Mariner quickly examines the paper and discovers that it is useless. He quickly rushes into the drifter's boat and cancels the deal. This enrages the drifter. The drifter says he has a zero return policy and tries to stab Mariner. A fight ensues and Mariner kills the drifter. In the next scene, Mariner demonstrates how he fishes. He dives into the water as bait and soon a massive mutated fish appears. He then uses his weapon to kill the fish and prepares food for everyone. Mariner was rude to them at first, but now he appears to be nice to them as he starts talking to Enola. He allows Enola to draw with a colored pencil and also teaches her how to swim. Helen Helen appears concerned as she witnesses their bond growing stronger. After a while, they come across the barter outpost and notice some men waving at them. Mariner is suspicious, so he looks beneath the water and discovers the smokers waiting for them. He immediately turns the boat around in order to flee, but the smokers give chase. They somehow manage to avoid the attacks of the smokers. Mariner then deploys the extra sails as parachutes, allowing them to flee faster. After they are safe, Mariner forces Helen to reveal the truth about Enola's tattoo, so she disclosed closes that the tattoo is the path to dry land. When Mariner hears this, he claims that dry land is a myth, but she does not believe him. As a result, he decides to show her. He places Helen inside a large bubble and submerges her. He can breathe through his gills, so he takes her deep into the ocean and shows her the past world, which is completely covered in water, which shocks her. Meanwhile, Enola is waiting for them in the boat when she notices something in the water and quickly hides. When Mariner and Helen swim to the surface, they discover that they have been apprehended by the smokers. Deacon coerces them into telling him about Enola, but they both remain silent. Deacon then shoots at the air, pretending to kill them. And as a result, Enola comes out, being concerned, and she is quickly captured by the smokers. Deacon orders his men to kill Mariner and Helen, but the two escape by diving into the water. Helen says she can't hold her breath that long, and Mariner tells her that he'll breathe for her. How's he gonna do that? Oh. He'll just make out with her for a while, I see. After some time, they return to the surface and discover that their boat has been destroyed. On the other hand, Deacon pretends to be nice to Enola and inquires about the tattoo behind her back, but she remains silent. He then offers her some colored pencils and asks her again, but she doesn't say anything. Back on the destroyed boat, Mariner and Helen are hopeless. Helen inquires as to why he did not accept her when she offered herself, to which he responds that she did not like him then. The answer touches her heart and she kisses him before the two of them make love on the boat. Because there's no turn on like knowing that your surrogate daughter has been kidnapped. The following day, Mariner attempts to repair the boat, but they discover Gregor and his hot air balloon. This guy's nuts. Gregor then takes him to the boat where the survivors of Atoll are staying. At night, they talk about going on a search for dry land, but the people aren't ready to look for Enola because it's dangerous to face the smokers. Mariner then decides to go on his own in search of the little girl. After a while, he arrives at the smoker's ship and enters it, killing the smokers one after another. I can imagine no scarier death than being held underwater by Kevin Costner. <laughs> Meanwhile, Deacon gathers the smokers and lies to them, claiming to have discovered the way to dry land. He orders everyone to begin rowing, thereby propelling the ship forward. As the men begin to row, Mariner approaches Deacon alone and asks to free Enola. When Deacon refuses, Mariner threatens to drop the flame into the oil reserve, which will cause the entire ship to explode. Deacon does not believe he will act irrationally, but Mariner is batshit and drops the flame, causing a massive explosion. Deacon then flees with the little girl before 
before Mariner reaches the top at the podium and notices him on the plane. He immediately fires a spear gun at the ship's fence and ziplines down. Following that, he uses the metal rope to create a barrier, causing the plane to crash before taking off. Fortunately, Enola is unharmed and the two of them embrace. However, the ship begins to break down, leaving them with no means of escape. Fortunately, Helen Gregor and an atoll resident arrive. Before the ship breaks down, they drop the rope and pull Mariner and Enola up. But Deacon grabs the rope and climbs up as well. When Helen notices this, she throws a heavy object at him and Enola kicks him, causing him to fall into the ocean. Mariner and Helen make it to the hot air balloon, but a persistent Deacon jumps on a jet ski and shoots at the hot air balloon, causing Enola to fall into the water. Deacon orders his men to capture the little girl, but Mariner is quick to respond. He grabs the rope and ties it around his leg before leaping from the hot air balloon. He successfully grabs Enola. The rope becomes a bungee cord, and he springs up just in time, causing the jet skis to collide and explode. Finally, they reach the hot air balloon safely. This time, Gregor is able to understand Enola's tattoo and head in the direction of dry land. After several days of flight, they spot a bird on their hot air balloon. When they look further, they are astounded to see land for the first time in their lives. They are overjoyed to finally be here and begin exploring the area. A few moments later, they notice a small hut and enter it to find a couple's bones lying together. They also discover the map drawing, which is similar to the one on Enola's back. That hut is revealed to be owned by Enola's family. Her family appears to have sent her away in the hope that she will bring more people to dry land. Meanwhile, Mariner finds the land to be uncomfortable. Plus, look at that leather jerkin and those earrings. This guy can't be held down by one lady, and he feels that he belongs in the sea. He then approaches Enola and informs her that he is leaving, which saddens her. He tells her that he isn't born for dry land, but she tries to assure him that he will adapt. However, he doesn't change his mind and bids Enola and Helen one final goodbye before departing. In the final scene, Helen and Enola realize that they're on the summit of Mount Everest crazy. They then watch Mariner sailing away from the cliff. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.